Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. We have successfully completed the first two episodes of the Python for DevOps series and today is day three where we will learn about keywords and variables. Before we get into today's video, let's quickly recap what we have learned as part of day one and day two. So as part of day one, we learned about the introduction of Python for DevOps, where we understood how and why Python is used by DevOps engineers. We learned about some popular use cases. We understood the difference between shell scripting and Python scripting. And finally, we have also installed Python and ran our very first Python script in just a couple of minutes. This was about day one. Then in day two, we learned about the concept called data types. What exactly is a data type and what are the different data types in Python? Of course, we have only deep dived into string data types and numeric data types. Particularly in day two, the section where I have explained about the string data type examples, the manipulation functions and the inbuilt functions, that is how to perform the string manipulations and how to use the inbuilt string functions is very, very important from the interview point of view, right? So I have explained them in the day two video and examples are also available in the GitHub repository. So I highly recommend you to go through this if you have it. Perfect. Now, today is day three and we will deep dive into the concept of keywords and variables. So let's get started. If you have any questions, again, do let me know in the comment section. You can also share any sort of feedback in the comment section. There is also another option. You can click on the join button and join our channel. You will get access to a dedicated telegram group. Perfect. Now, keywords, right? So let me increase the font size so that you people can see this better. Now, what exactly is keywords? Now, I will tell that for any programming language, not just Python, but for any programming language, I say that there are four strong pillars. One is you need to understand the keywords of that particular programming language. Two is you need to understand the data types that are available in that particular programming language. Three is you need to understand the operators. Four is you need to have a logical reasoning skill. So these are four strong pillars of any programming language. And if you learn all four of this, then you will master that programming language. No question about it. If you know how and why keywords are used, if you know how and why data types are used, if you know how and why operators are used, and if you develop the logical reasoning skill by practicing programming each and every day, then you will easily master any programming language, not just Python. Now, specifically talking about Python and this series, Python for DevOps, we will cover keywords basics in today's video. I'll explain you what exactly is keywords and what are the different types of keywords that are available. But the complete concept of keywords, that is, all the keywords in Python, we will learn throughout this series, right? Because there are so many keywords and what we will try to do is whenever we learn a particular concept in Python, we will come across those keywords. Then data types we have learned in the previous class. I have explained what exactly is data type and we learned about string as well as numeric that is integer and flow data type, right? Similarly, as we progress through the series, we will learn about list data types. We will learn about uh, tuple. We will learn about uh, dictionaries, sets, all of these things we will cover. And operators, again, you have a dedicated video. See, all these things are available in the series uh, syllabus. So day six is dedicated for operators, right? So we will cover operators in day six. And logical reasoning, you will build if you practice. So this is something that cannot be taught. Perfect. I can give you some examples, but if you want to master the logical reasoning, you just have to practice scripts each and every day. Now, 
Today's topic is about keywords, right? Abhishek, you told that keywords is one of the pillars for uh, programming languages and specifically for Python, you said that, okay, it is very, very important, but what exactly is a keyword? So keywords are nothing but, let's say you want to write any Python program, okay? So this Python program that you want to write can be as simple as like, let's say you want to write a calculator Python program, okay? Or you want to write a Python program to fetch resources from AWS or, you know, you want to get resources from uh, GitHub. So for any of these things, what you will do is firstly, you will think about a logic to implement the program, right? You will say, this should be my step one, step two, step three, four, and five, right? So to build this logic and to implement the logic in Python, you will use keywords. For example, okay, let's say you are right, you are asked to write numbers from one to hundred. Okay. So what you will do is instead of writing print one, print two, print three, print four, you will lose a for loop. Now, when I say for loop, for is a keyword, okay? Let's say you are asked to build some conditional logic in Python. Then you will use if, else, right? Now, what is if and else? This is again a keyword in Python, right? So let's say we are building the logic of some exceptional handling. So during that, we will use try, except and again these are nothing but keywords in python so if you learn keywords in python that's the reason why i'm saying you will learn each and every concept in python so here i have listed out some of the popular keywords not some of the like the most used keywords in python by devops engineer i have listed out and there are 26 keywords that i could list out and don't worry, like I told you, you cannot learn all of these 26 in one single class, right? If you learn all these 26 keywords, you almost know Python programming language. If you know how to use and when to use, uh, let's say, while loop, how to use when to use for loop. If you know how to use try, accept, and finally for exceptional handling, right? And if you know how to create classes, why they are required. Perfect. So if you know all of these things, then you know the Python programming language. The thing that you have to make sure is when you are learning Python, right? After this 19 episodes, okay? Or if you learned Python from any other courses, let's say you learn Python from uh, any other places available on internet, then you have to make sure that the 26 keywords that I have posted in that particular MD file, right? In the GitHub repository, you know all of those keywords. Okay. And given a program, you need to understand which keyword to use. Okay. Because in Python, without keywords, you cannot write the logic. In simple sense, understand that in English, if you are asked to write a sentence, okay. In English, if you are asked to write a sentence without a verb, you will not be able to write a sentence. Similarly, if you are asked to write a program, right? Without keywords, you will not be able to write programs. Now you might say that Abhishek, I can write a simple program called uh, print hello world. Now here I did not use any keywords. Now this is not a real time program, right? This is just an example that you are trying to learn. Okay. Now don't take this example very seriously that in English without verb, I cannot write sentence, but in Python, I can write you know, print hello world, then I wrote a program. It's not like that. I am telling you that in real time use case, whenever you want to write a program, when you want to build a logic without keywords, you cannot do that, right? So keywords are very, very essential for a programming language and any Python program that you take, you will find keywords. And these are the popular keywords that are available in Python. So for today's class, what you need to do is just give a very quick glance through all the list of keywords that I have provided, I'll just read them once. So, and is a keyword in Python. We will learn it when we learn about the logical operators. Then or is a keyword and you will learn about or when we again learn about the logical operators. Similarly, not. 
then you have if else else if we will learn when we understand the concept of conditional handling or when we understand the concept of if conditions right when you want to build conditions i'll give one example let's say as a devops engineer you are asked to get list of s3 buckets but the only condition is that s3 buckets with name abhishek only are the s3 buckets that should be given as the output for example there are 100 s3 buckets and in that only 10 s3 buckets have abhishek in the name so you have to print only those 10 s3 buckets so in such cases what you will do firstly you will get all the s3 buckets then using this if else if else conditions or else if condition you will try to print the names of the s3 buckets that have abhishek right so we will use this when we want to implement some conditions and we will deep dive into it don't worry then while and for you will learn during the loops when we understand about loop you will understand about these keywords after that we have try except and finally these are used for exceptional handling or it is also called error handling define and return or def and return are used during the functions i mean when we learn about functions you will learn about it class and import okay let's go step by step class you will learn about uh, it when we implement uh, programs using classes and objects then you have import and from you will learn this in the next class itself when we learn about functions packages and modules this is also same you will learn when we learn about functions modules and packages true and false you will learn when we understand about the boolean data types then we have none so none is basically uh, something when you want to uh, return a, a null value or you don't want to perform any operation uh, during that thing again we will cover this as part of functions or we will also cover this as part of classes so then you have is you have lambda which is basically used for anonymous functions in python with uh, we can cover this during file operations then you have global which defines the scope of the variables we will learn it in just i mean by end of today's class i'll explain you what exactly this is and again you have something called non local so these are the keywords that we often use in python programming language specifically devops engineers use these keywords right there can be few other keywords but i'm only restricting from devops engineer point of view okay so by the end of this entire python course you have to make sure that you learn all of these keywords in python so that's why i told you that keywords is one of the strong pillars of python programming language and along with that what are the other pillars that i have talked about see if you go to the syllabus you will find that so the other pillars that i was talking about is one operators you need to learn about operators you need to learn about uh, keywords you need to learn about data types these are some foundational concepts with which you can write any kind of program in python got it perfect now this is all about keywords right now you can take any random program on internet just search for github python examples okay i'm randomly searching for it right so here there are some python programs let's go into it let's open any of this program let's say one file handle probably i don't know i haven't opened this i'm opening it in front of you people so let's open this delete records in a binary file py so see here import is a keyword that i have explained you def is a keyword we we can open this parallelly and uh, you will notice that the python program has keywords and you can see how many keywords are available in this python program right import is something that i have explained you just before def is again a keyword that is used with is again a keyword right and uh, here with is used which is again a keyword this is a data type perfect so if you see here again here with is used this is another keyword so this are for is a keyword if is a keyword so any python program if you want to understand how to write it you need to understand the concept of keywords now looking at this you might feel that this program is very complicated but it is very easy if someone knows all of these keywords if i know what is import okay i understood this first line if i know what is def i understood line number 4 if i know what is with i understand line number 6 print is basically an inbuilt function right again int is a data type with 
is again a what do you call it uh, sorry so with is again a, a keyword then again here there is a for statement if statement which are keywords so by looking at this file if someone knows the keywords they already know this program they can easily read the program and understand the program okay so this is how keywords are used in python and they are very very essential now moving on the next topic that i wanted to explain is about variables what exactly is a variable and the concept of variables in python so i'll give you a very basic example let's say you are asked to write a program to print name of a person let's say you want to print abhishek using a python program so the easiest way of writing that program is you can just say print abhishek right and of course when you execute this python program you will see on the terminal name called abhishek so this problem is solved but there is another way of writing it the other way of writing it is you can just say name is equals to abhishek and print name so what did i do here here i wrote the python program in just one line but here i wrote the python program in two lines but what did i do in line number 1 i said name is equals to abhishek that means i am defining a variable called name and i am assigning the value of the variable with a string called abhishek right and then in line number 2 i am just printing this variable now you might be asking me that abhishek but here i can solve this program in just one line why did you complicate this by writing two lines i'll tell you the use case see here you just have one simple program to print the name called abhishek but let's say you have a python program okay in your organization let's say you have a python program that has 1000 lines okay and in this 1000 lines let's say you are printing the name of the ec2 instance okay all of you understand what is an ec2 instance right so let's say you are printing the name of the ec2 instance in line number 1 line number 25 line number 500 600 700 and 1000 so you are printing it six times print name of the ec2 instance let's say the name of the ec2 instance is also abhishek now for some reason in this program the program that you have in your organization the name got changed from abhishek to manoj okay so now what you need to do you have to go to the program and you have to modify line number 1 25 500 600 700 and 1000 if the name of the ec2 instance is printed let's say 25 times in the program then you have to modify this value from abhishek to manoj 25 times whereas if you are using this way of writing the program okay so what you will do is in the initial lines of the program itself you will say ec2 underscore instance underscore name is equals to abhishek okay and what you will do whenever you want to print the ec2 instance name okay instead of printing using this format print abhishek you will just say print ec2 underscore instance underscore name okay it can be in line number 1 line number 10 25 30 it can be like 500 times in a program it does not matter you know tomorrow if the name gets changed from abhishek to manoj you will just modify this line number which is in the initial lines let's say this line number is 1 okay you will just modify once in your program from abhishek to manoj and in all the other places the output is automatically updated why because instead of hard coding the value here what did you do 
you have hard coded the value in the program and here you have used concept called variable right what is the advantage of variable the advantage of variable is that instead of hard coding the value in a program if you use variable it will take care of updating all the references in your python program okay so if the ec2 instance name is used 1000 times if the ec2 instance name is used 2000 times there is no problem at all just modify when you declare the variable what do i mean by declare variable here i am basically declaring a variable right so if you just say name is equals to abhishek so in python what does this line mean so this line means that one you have created a variable called name two you are using this syntax you are using is equals to which is basically a assignment operator in python we will learn that in uh, number 6 episode number 6 but for now just understand this is an assignment operator and this is a string so what does this syntax mean that you have created a variable called name and using is equals to that using assignment operator you are providing or you are basically assigning this string to the variable so what has happened variable called name is assigned with a value called abhishek so that is the meaning of this particular line name is equals to abhishek right so whenever you write something without double quote understand the difference between this and this so if you are writing something inside the double quote in python then it's a string whereas if you are writing something without double quote and you are using is equals to operator or assignment operator you can to assign a value for this then this is called as a variable right so there are different programming languages there are different syntaxes in python the syntax is very very simple you can just say name is equals to abhishek from programming language to programming language this syntax differs now the advantage of python is that in python you don't have to define beforehand if this variable is going to store a string or if this variable is going to store an integer right or if this variable is going to store float or anything you don't have to de declare beforehand in some programming languages you have to define before itself where you have to say var name string is equals to abhishek for example this is a syntax of go programming language okay so in go programming language you will use this particular syntax where you will say variable i am declaring a variable called name which is of type string and that will have a value called abhishek but in python it is very very simple you will just say name is equals to abhishek now this kind of syntax programming languages are called statically typed programming languages whereas this type of programming languages are called dynamically typed programming languages okay so go language java these are all statically typed programming languages whereas python is a dynamically typed programming language okay when we learn about functions when we deep dive into future classes you will understand this in a better way but for now understand that python is a dynamically typed programming language because you don't have to declare this complex syntaxing you don't have to say var name string then you don't have to define the variable uh, sorry you don't have to assign the value to the variable in this format you can simply say name is equals to abhishek or you can also say you know x is equals to 6 you can say uh, you know value is equals to true which is boolean so in python you can directly assign the values to a variable without declaring the type of the variable so that's why python is called as dynamically typed programming language got it so now let's try to put this in a program whatever i uh, try to explain you so that you people will understand slightly better way of course this is a very very simple topic but let's try to do it okay for example you know we'll go to day3 folder 
and one thing whatever i am teaching is already available as a md file here okay keywords that i have taught is already available here variables that i am going to teach right now is also available here so syntax for each and everything is available you can copy it and you can also practice it after this video so in day 3 let's create a file called test.py i'll delete this file uh, don't search for this file okay now what i'll try to do is the first way of writing a program let's say you are asked to print the name of the ec2 instance what you will do directly you will just say print let's say the name of the ec2 instance is uh, project xyz instance okay so what you can do simply say python test.py so cd day 3 i need to go through the day 3 folder right and now here i can say python test.py perfect see here it prints the value called project xyz instance now how do you variableize this particular program it's again very simple just remove this line say ec2 underscore instance underscore name is equals to project hyphen xyz hyphen instance right and now i can say print ec2 instance name now let's try to print it see the value is same like i explained you in the theory part the value is the same output of the program is the same only thing is in case one you wrote it without using variables and in the second way you wrote it by using the variable format advantage like i told you see if in different places of a program so right now you don't understand the concept of functions so that's why i'm not trying to uh, make it complicated but let's say this variable understand that this is a python program and here you are trying to print this 15 20 times okay so when you learn about functions you will understand why these use cases are needed i'll give you a brief overview also but for now let's say that you will print it let's copy paste it okay i'm printing it six times okay and what has happened is the requirement has changed and the requirement got converted that the ec2 instance name is not project xyz it is project abc okay now i'll just modify this line only once and if i try to print this program of course you can guess the output what would be the output output would be cd day 3 i need to go to the day 3 folder yeah python test dot py see this is the output in the other way if you are hard coding this value okay then what would happen is you have to modify this line six different times got it so by modifying it six different times you will get the output but here your amount of effort has increased and another advantage of variables is that not just updating one single time okay one is i told you instead of updating in 10 15 places 100 places you will update it only once but the other use case is that other advantage is that let's say uh, this hard coding thing that is the print statement print abhishek okay let's say this is used in line number 1 15 25 40 160 700 okay and the name got changed from abhishek to manoj then you told one of your devops engineering team members to update the script so that name gets changed from abhishek to manoj so this person you know he is a very dedicated person Uh, the devops engineer so he went he updated in line number 1 15 25 40 1 60 60 but he did not find line number 700 okay probably he forgot he did not look at it or you know he overlooked at it and he did not update line number 700 so the task became incomplete right so not just about reducing the time what does variables do 
one is variables help you in reducing the time also you no know, reducing the errors got it so this is another advantage of using variables perfect now another concept that i wanted to explain in today's class is in variables there are two different types okay one is you have something called as global variables and another thing is you have local variables okay so in tomorrow's class when we learn about functions right in day 4 when we learn about functions packages as well as modules so we will talk in detail about this global variables as well as local variables because the concept of function is very very important to understand it but for now just understand that let's say in your python program you have three functions okay let's say you are writing a calculator program in python don't worry if you did not understand this completely anyways we will cover this in tomorrow's class but just consider it as a teaser for tomorrow's class okay let's say you are writing a calculator program in python now in calculator program so you have multiple functionalities of this calculator right one functionality is addition another functionality is subtraction another functionality is multiplication and the last functionality let's say is division so what you will do in your python program you will write four functions one function for addition one function for subtraction one function for multiplication and finally one function for division okay and you know whenever you are writing this functions okay even inside this functions you know you will be using some variables let's say your task is you need to take input from a person and let's say the person gives input two numbers number 1 as 1 and number 2 as 4 you know your program should take these two numbers as input and it has to print addition of these two numbers multiplication subtraction and division right so what you will do in your program is you will take these two values as variables and you will perform addition you will perform subtraction multiplication and division okay so even when you are writing programs using functions you will use variables and if you are declaring the variables okay understand this carefully let's say you are writing a python program and if you are declaring a variable that is here we have declared variable right name is equals to abhishek is a variable similarly if you are saying variable 1 is equals to 1 and variable 2 is equals to 4 if you are declaring it outside all of these functions that is in the initial lines of the program let's say in your python program such variables are called as global scoped variables whereas if you are defining variables inside these functions they are called as local scoped variables now what is difference between global scoped and local scoped so let's say you have two functions like this one is definition addition and here you will say for example a plus b return a plus b and you have another function called definition subtraction and here probably you will say return a minus b don't worry again if you don't understand this syntax there is no problem at all now what you will do for global variables is that before these two functions let's say this is line number 4 this is line number 10 in line number 2 or line number 3 you will declare a is equals to 1 b is equals to 5 now because these variables are outside these definitions that is they are not inside the definitions right they are outside the definitions so that's why these variables are called global variables and reason why they are called global variables is they can be accessed inside these functions now when you say return a plus b then it will automatically read these variables from these particular lines when you say a minus b again it will read the variables from this particular lines and it will give the output whereas if you are declaring variables inside this blocks that is if you are saying def addition and inside this if you say a is equals to 1 b is equals to 
and if you say return or print a plus b this will give the output but when you write another function called subtraction and inside the subtraction if you say print a minus b then this program will give you an error because variables are declared inside this function so this function cannot access it because these variables are called local variables let's try to understand this with the practical knowledge okay now let's say i'll write this function like this first i'll just say def addition okay and inside this let's say okay i'll say print a plus b okay and let's say i'll uh, create one more thing here called definition of course i did not complete the syntax well i am just trying to explain you people uh, let's complete it probably this is much better right so that you people will understand it easily so i'll create one more function called subtraction and inside this i'll just say print a minus b now if i declare the variables here that is if i just say a is equals to 10 b is equals to 5 okay and if you try to execute this python program python this dot py okay oh sorry i did not call the functions so i just need to call the function addition and subtraction okay now if you try to print this python program see what is the output 15 and 5 because the variables are declared outside these functions so even inside if you are trying to access this variables okay variables are declared here and i am trying to access it inside uh, the function that is in line number 6 and 9 i am able to access but let's say if i slightly modify it okay and here if i just say a is equals to 10 b is equals to 5 now this output will be written but here it will throw an error because a and b are not known to this function or python does not understand what is the value of a and b because a and b are not declared outside the function blocks but they are declared inside this function so only this function right only this function knows what is a and b what is the value of variable a and b this function does not understand the value let's see see it printed the first one it prints a plus b as 15 and when it comes here it will return an error because these are local variables okay so what is the concept that i am trying to explain if you want to create a variable okay that is accessed inside multiple functions then you have to make the variable global scope okay whereas if you want to create a variable right that is available only inside one function then you have to make the variables local scope okay so probably in addition you wants to create uh, sorry you want to create one more thing called c is equals to 10 right and you now you can just keep it here now this makes proper sense okay now this program will not give you any error probably you can say a plus b plus c now here c is only accessed within this particular function and in the subtraction function you did not use c so there will not be any error here okay so here see you got a plus b plus c as 25 and subtraction output is only 5 and there are no errors in this program because c is only used in line number 6 so you have declared it as a local scoped variable okay so what is this this is a local scoped variable whereas these are global scoped variables got it so practice local and global scoped it's okay if you don't understand what exactly this is what is a function what is the syntax of a function don't worry we will learn that thing in tomorrow's class so if you feel that this is overwhelming for you you can practice this thing in tomorrow's class no problem but for now just understand that there are global scoped and local scoped variables 
Now, the final topic that I want to explain before I leave you people is the naming convention of variables. This is very, very important. And if you are writing a program and if you are not following a proper naming convention, interviewer will understand that you don't have real experience. What does that mean? So let's say in previous example, I said name is equals to Abhishek. Right? Now you can also write this name is equals to Abhishek. Right? And you can say print name. No doubt you will get output here and you will also get output here. But here I declared the name in small case or lower case. Whereas here I declared name in upper case, right? Or capital letters or block letters. This is wrong way of defining. Of course, it is not completely wrong, but this is not a good practice. Okay. So always declare variables in lower cases. Okay, this is rule number one or this is good case number one. Now, another thing that I wanted to explain in the naming convention is that let's say you are declaring a variable something like this EC2 instance. Probably the variable name is EC2 instance name and you are assigning some value to the variable. Now, this is very difficult to read, right? Here it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost like 14 characters. And you know, on a first glance, it is very difficult to read because there are no spaces. There is nothing here. So a good way of declaring such variables, right? If your variable has two parts or three parts, right? For example, full name. Instead of writing full name like this, what you can do is you can declare full underscore name is equals to Abhishek Viramala, right? Or EC2 underscore instance underscore name is equals to project XYZ instance. Got it? So when you have, when you want to declare a variable that has multiple parts in it, then use underscores in between. And this is called as snake casing. Okay. The name it is name is like that. Okay. So if you declare variables in like this, in this format, you call it as snake casing format. Okay. There is another good way of declaring it. Either you can declare it in snake casing or you can declare it in camel casing. Okay. What is camel casing? Camel casing is nothing but you will declare something like this. EC2. And when the second part of the name starts, declare that in capitals. EC2 instance. And again, when the third part comes, declare that again in capital. Okay. So first one should always be small. Second, third, fourth, fifth, how many number of uh, parts of that variable are available? You know, you can declare all of them in capital letters. And this is called as camel casing. Okay. So one is always declare variables in lower case if it just has one part. Okay. And the second thing is use snake casing or camel casing. Okay. The third thing is declare variables as descriptive as possible. This is the last uh, thumb rule that I wanted to explain. Don't worry. So the third thing is make variables as descriptive as possible. What does that mean? So let's say you want to uh, declare name is equals to Abhishek. Okay. You can do that. Or other thing that you can do is also n is equals to Abhishek. Okay. You will understand that n represents name here, but other people will not understand. Right. So, you know, whenever you are trying to declare a variable, keep it as descriptive as possible. When you want to declare full name, okay, call it as full name instead of fn. Of course, there are cases where, you know, uh, you have to declare variables as small as possible. Okay, instead of writing EC2 instance name, you can also write it as uh, EC2 name, something like that. But I will cover that case later. Okay, I will tell you when the variables names have to be small. What is the reason uh, for keeping the variables name small? When is it a good practice? 
but for now because we are just at the third class of programming understand that variable names should be in the lower case second thing follow snake casing or camel casing third thing is keep the variable names as descriptive as possible so these three points are also available in the github uh, documentation in the variables.md so you can go back and you can read the notes again if you find something confusing okay so finally uh, if you have that question that abhishek sometimes i have seen variables names are very very small yes that is true let's say you are writing a for loop okay inside the for loop if you are using any variable that has to be as simple as possible there i don't mind if you are using i or x or y j k right why is that we will learn when we understand about the concept of for loops for now just understand these three concepts about variable naming convention should we summarize what we have learned today one is we learned about the concept of keywords right so i have 26 keywords in the notes and you have to make sure by the end of this python course you learn about all of those 26 keywords okay right now how many keywords we know out of this 26 zero i guess right but don't worry i'll make sure by the end of this uh, python for devops series you will learn all of these 26 keywords number two what did we learn we learned about variables we learned what is a variable why variables are required how to use variables and in that we have learned about the naming convention of variable right we learned about scope of variables that is global scoped and local scoped right and we have learned about some good practices right this is about today's class and either go through my notes or prepare your own notes but make sure that you understood this concept in complete way thank you so much for watching today's video take care everyone see you all in the next one bye bye